why Tahiti? Honestly, all signs are pointing towards Tahiti. I'm not doing it to see people's reactions. I'm doing it just to fulfill a dream. People say, oh, yeah, it's a pipe dream, something's never gonna happen. And that's how a lot of people looked at this thing. And that's the vibe I've got from a lot of people. And every now and then a pipe dream works out. This water bike was just drawing me in. This is an idea that I just started to believe in more and more and it's just been such a crazy, long-winded project to try and make happen. You know, my mechanic buddy, he literally pan built every ski. Buddy and Matt McCall and myself and Bill King from 2Moto, he was the guy who first came down here and I showed him my, my drawing and he made the first creation for me. And we, when we first rode that bike, it didn't work and then we added surface area to it and all of a sudden this thing that wouldn't hold itself above water held itself above water and it took off. And then since then there's been these crazy roller coaster ride of highs and lows. Okay, we're done. We took a little bit from each guy just about. I mean, no one, not one guy, this is how it's gonna work. No one could do that and I was bummed because I thought some guy was gonna be smart and just come in and go, oh, this is what you're doing wrong, you idiot, and just do this. Nobody knows anything about it because you're not supposed to ride a motorcycle on water. You know, this journey's been crazy so far. We we thought stiff suspension was gonna be the way to go and a whole stiff rig was gonna be the way to go and it worked, but it's nothing like it does now. Now that the suspension's soft and we got some play in the ski, it goes 10 times faster than what the stiff one does. The first time I mentioned this uh, water skin project to DC, we were at the 20 year anniversary party in LA. I was talking to Jeff Taylor and I showed Jeff the footage. He was like, holy cow, man, like, look at this, it's amazing. We've got to do this. And I think that was really, that was really what started it. I've been fortunate to witness a lot of things. And this is one that uh, I think there's the, the biggest gap between an idea and a reality that I think I've ever seen. If I can mention video series, Pipe Dream, Robbie Madison surfs a dirt bike. <laughs> I had put together some storyboards. We went over those storyboards, and I think this is the first time it really hit, this is really happening. I mean, it's, it's a familiar saying too, so it's not like, oh, what was it called? It was a You were telling us something. We still didn't know, really, if it was going to work at all. <laughs> it, was, it was that uh, uh, different and, and, again, ambitious. I'm a firm believer of that you're at the right place at the right time, all the time. Going to Please tell me you brought some little motorcycles. Yeah. Good, because when we get there, we're going to go sit in the sand and we're going to make a big giant track, okay? Me and you. Because I don't want to work on skis or bikes no more. Freaking tools! Are we missing anything, Chris? No. No? Is that it? Yeah, thanks. Well, my first impressions here is pretty overwhelming, just, just the way that this place looks, you know, it's so tropical and taking it to the ocean just comes with a whole lot of challenges that we haven't tested, so this, this whole trip's like a huge gamble for us. Other than that, we're ready to go. Raymana was really a great guy to have on our, on our team and it was absolutely essential and key that we had him on board and definitely made life easy for us. 
But the thing is, right now it's west. You know, right now it's west. Yeah, yeah, super so you can't west. get off it, right? No, not today. Without some form of launch platform and catch platform, there was no way of riding in the ocean. Trying to find barges, dude. It was going to random marinas and talking to people and, and you know, it's a whole other language. Not a lot of people speak English, so there was a language barrier. The people that own the barge live in Denmark. They don't have cell phones. No one takes credit cards. <sighs> the big barge. It's freaking short. It'll work. We just need to have like a raised section at the back here over the back of the engines. So the barges were totally different to what we expected. So the plan that we originally had was out the window and we had to start from scratch. Definitely need this, this raised part just to be able to get as much speed over this short distance as possible. How high do you think we need to go off the bat? We're saying five feet. Matt McCall and Jamie Patelli, these built this launch ramp that I designed from when we first saw the boat. And they made it exactly how I saw it in my head, which is awesome. Going to a country where you don't have any tools or you know you don't know the language or stuff like that, it was kind of hard, but yeah, we made it work. Day one has been pretty productive, so I'm, I'm sorry. Day one being productive? Uh, that's what I heard. Well, the bike's in, the boys already got the, the, like, the landing barge almost done. Good. Um, we just waiting on the other barge, launch barge. And stuff. a couple and then, little... I mean, that bike should be ready to ride by tomorrow, no worries. I'm guessing that's what he's doing now, waiting for everybody to leave and then open it up, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just doesn't like to the center and watch him work. Nah. I don't, it took me two and a half days, but the customs deals and the issues with parts not showing and really humid, really sweaty, just horrible. <laughs> Bad for fat white guys. That's all I can say. Putting the jet ski in. Ray Miner's backing me in here. And uh, conditions are good down here in Papara. We're going out to, um, going out to hunt some waves, maybe do some surfing today. So, looking forward to that. Getting my moto kit on to jump in the water. I'm super nervous just about surfing in all my gear. But I'm just hoping to, um, just hoping to be able to float as best as possible because I'm, I'm, I have a big fear about drowning, you know, especially with this project. We're doing stuff that's probably deemed to be stupid. Let's see how well I float in my moto gear. I've never jumped in the ocean before in motorcycle gear, so here's the world first. It was actually a perfect step because I wanted to kind of feel what it would be like to be getting rolled over by a wave with full gear on. The very first wave I caught, I made, and then I think I got a couple extra waves, and then eventually I fell off, and the waves hit me, and I got held down in full gear, and um, definitely not ideal, that's for sure. It was so powerful out there. It really kind of made me go, oh, damn, what have I got myself into? Essentially, I'd just been getting on the jet ski and riding it. You know, those days when it'd be like almost hurricane conditions, I'm like, what a bad day to go jet skiing. And I'll be like, oh, maybe I should go out there and just throw myself into some bad situations. Okay, here's Robbie. I just hope this works, you know, because I've dreamt about this, I've envisioned it, I, you know, it's kept me awake many nights, and now that we're here and we have the support to help try and make it happen, it'd just be such a shame for it to fall short when we get so close, you know. Man, I hope it works. At first, I didn't know how it was going to work, you know. It was like, uh, he was like, yeah, you're going to ride a motorcycle on water. And I was like, how are you gonna do that? And then once like he kind of explained to me like, okay, well we have this and like he's been testing on the lake 
Then I was like, okay, it could probably happen even though I can't understand it yet. As ambitious and, and far-fetched of, of an idea um, that it was and a challenge, I knew that if it were at all possible that Robbie was going to make it happen. This run up here it was quite sketchy and it's super rocky and right before the water it's got a really kind of sharp drop. Today I've been able to get on the gas hard and I'm coming on the water with definitely more momentum and that's 100% helping the ride on the water. I'm right on the fine line of letting the thing plane or sinking and I just I just backed off too much and couldn't establish the plane again. Prove the airbag works. <laughs> Anytime the bike got near water, we were still crossing our fingers hoping it wasn't just gonna sink and go wrong, whether there was a wave or not. I mean it was it was that difficult to do. One wrong angle or, or one thing out and the, it's, it'll stop working. When it's wear and tear on the bike, every time it goes under, the salinity of the water here is so intense that it's just getting into everything. I can hear my bottom end whirring and the bike's brand new, so. We knew we had a little bit of work ahead of us coming here just to fine tune and exactly get the right setup for these conditions and finally getting there now, which is great. You know, the, the tests that we've had today have been really good. I think we're in a good spot. We're turning it a lot better now, so things are looking good. This afternoon we're going to try the barges and with the lifter place and the way the bike's going I can actually go a lot slower and maintain without dropping in the water so I think it's going to be something I can approach really slow now and, and be a bit more precise on where my final destination is. The takeoff barge, our setup is quite unique. It's, it's, it's downhill the whole way with a little lip at the end to try and accelerate downhill, which is going to help us. And then right at the end, get a little bit of pop at the front end and pull the front end up so I can land hopefully on the back, back ski. So it's going to be an interesting afternoon. Hopefully it goes according to plan. We don't sink another bike because I don't think the team can deal with another sleepless night. The testing on the lagoon was essential. and It really was a key point to letting us just get all the little fine tuning done and letting us get comfortable in their environment to head, head out on our expedition into the ocean. I feel my job right now is to dream up new things. If I'm not coming up with exciting new ideas, then I don't feel I'm doing what I've led my sponsors to believe I'm going to deliver for them. All in all, I'm so stoked. I mean, that was amazing. Just the fact that it's working here and we've got this huge ambitious journey ahead of us for the next couple of days and just a great start to know that we can do this. The bikes, it works in these conditions. That's killer, huh? See the manuals? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a, okay. Give me a wet, you don't care. Good job. Smart. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, success for everyone. That was good. Yeah, go. yeah, Bobby. Just to get this thing to ride on the water and to get in front of a wave, I feel confident that we're going to be able to get into that position. Whether we get out of it or not is going to be up to, to God. But uh, it's um, it definitely, it's a, we're flying by the seat of our pants. It's a, it's a huge endeavor for all of us. I'm just stoked that we're all still staying positive. I think he's going to make it happen. Ask me a month ago, I would say, I don't, I don't even think we're going to go. But we actually, in the last month, made a lot of progress. In the beginning, I thought, you know, cool, riding across the water, that, that's amazing. But when I heard he actually wanted to ride one of the world's most dangerous, craziest waves, you know, that's, that's when it says Matto, and that's when it's like, oh, okay, here we go. This is, this is Robbie, and this is, uh, it's gonna get serious, and it's gonna get scary. I didn't go check out the waves because I told him if I went and saw something that looked kind of scary to me, I would come back and just tell you, you don't need to do this. Chupu is like the, you know, one of the best waves. It's really the perfect configuration. It's got everything going for it. You know, the reef position towards the south, southwest. No islands between here and Antarctica or land. So the swells just come out of the south. Perfect, really groomed and, you know, and we have a lot of days with no wind here. It's totally glassy, so the, the wave is, is very short, very intense, and very close to this channel where you can be standing filming in a boat. For filming, for cameramen, you can't beat it. You know, you're right there, so it's, um, it's a pretty special wave. So doing it at Chopo is going to be a big challenge, you know? The reef is shallower and there's more of an elbow and it's a bit more defined. If you fall, you can hit the reef. It was pretty questionable, the whole the whole thing, whether he would pull it off or not, or whether he'd even be alive, because obviously drowning is like a huge thing when you're in those big waves. When you come out of the left, look if there's no right, you know, coming. Johnny, can we confirm that? Get away from that right-hander. Yes. Thank you. That's you buddy. Thank you. Watching the swell coming in, and uh, one looked kind of good, I, and said to Raymond, this one, and he looks, he's like, yeah, yeah, this one, this one.